A live look outside Special Prosecutor Jack Smith's office in Washington, D.C. The Trump indictment watch is in full swing as a federal grand jury considering January 6th related charges against Mr. Trump is expected to reconvene in Washington. Uh, and Trump has been very vocal on Truth Social. He uh, put out this statement just yesterday saying, quote, I assume that an indictment from deranged Jack Smith and his highly partisan gang of thugs pertaining to my peacefully and patriotically speech will be coming out any day now as yet another attempt to cover up all the bad news about bribes, payoffs and extortion coming from the Biden camp. This seems to be the way they do it. Election interference, prosecutorial misconduct, Trump writes. And again, as we're watching uh, D.C., a lot a lot of interesting uh, threads through this story. Joining us to discuss some of them is independent journalist at Substack, Julie Kelly. Julie, welcome in. Good to see you. Good to see you guys, too. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure. So we're waiting for a possible third indictment. Yesterday, there were extra charges. We had Jack Smith charging the maintenance worker at Mar-a-Lago. Um, as we're looking at D.C., you know, there was an interesting uh, report you put out connecting sort of the lack of curiosity Jack Smith, who we see here, um, had when he was the head of the Department of Justice's public integrity section. He was there to look at political corruption, and we know back then, aha, Burisma came up. Reporters were asking the state department about hunter biden and you say in your tweet pretty uh, apropos here at what risk did he put the country by turning a blind eye to this egregious level of influence peddling in nations hostile to american interests i think a lot of people want to know the same thing tell us about your reporting well, thank you for that. So as you mentioned, Jack Smith was head of this public integrity section with the Department of Justice for about four and a half years during the Obama Biden administration. So this was just when Hunter Biden and James Biden, and as we know now, Joe Biden, were getting their wheels on wheels up actually, because we know that Hunter Biden took at least 70 overseas trips with his father on Air Force Two, including six to China. And that, those trips, took place on Jack Smith's watch. So the question is why uh, Jack Smith, seen right there, turned such a blind eye, ignored what was happening, not right under his nose in Washington, D.C., but headlines that were blaring throughout the summer of 2014 about Hunter Biden's appointment to the Burisma board. The White House was taking questions about this. The State Department, Jen Psaki, the spokeswoman at the time, the vice president's mm -hmm. office as well. So it's not like this was a, a secret in Washington. This was a hot topic. And apparently Jack Smith had no interest in that, no interest in anything that was happening with Hunter Biden and uh, Devin Archer. And let's not forget Christopher Hines, the stepson of then very powerful Democratic Senator John Kerry, who then became Julie. the Secretary of State. You know, it's all fascinating as it all, you know, comes around here, you know, sort of what is going on in the swamp, as they call it. But I do want to also get mm. your thoughts about, you know, you're posting some things about this possible third indictment. And, you know, we don't know when it will come down. We also don't know what will be in this indictment. But you say that there could be a chance that they could actually go so far to try and ask for, this would be crazy, a while, but no bail, to try and get him off the uh, campaign trail. I mean, that is sort of what you say. If the seriousness of the charges, they could argue that. That's absolutely right. And I discuss in my piece um, the 20, uh, 2021 court ruling by then Chief Judge of the D.C. District Court, Beryl Howell. And she laid out, believe it or not, special no bail rules to apply only to January 6th defendants. This is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. It's inimical to uh, equal application of the law, but there it is. And it has been guidance that other judges have used to determine that even if nonviolent offenders, people charged with obstruction of an official proceeding, which I believe will be the number one count that Jack Smith brings against Donald Trump to deny their release, keep them in custody, awaiting trial. Is it, is it, likely? Yes. Is it a certainty? No. Mm -hmm. But I put nothing past not just Jack Smith, but every judge on that D.C. District Court who's nothing more than a rubber stamp for the Department of Justice. I just, when you said the name Beryl Howell, I knew I knew it. And she's the one who actually allowed them to pierce Jack Smith, pierce the veal for Evan Corcoran's attorney-client privilege, which was really a, a, a big cornerstone uh, in the case, uh, you know, for Trump on his first federal indictment there. So, and she, that was the last act she did before she stepped down. Some say it was judge right. shopping. You know, 
To raise a really good point, keep in mind, and as you know, the classified documents case was entirely investigated in Washington, D.C. for the mere fact that they knew that Beryl Howell would give them whatever they wanted in terms of subpoenas. Then at the last minute, Jack Smith realizes, oops, I've got a venue issue. I need to move this to Southern Florida at the last minute. Read the transcripts from the grand jury proceedings that had happened in D.C. for, what, a year and a half, and then uh, seek the criminal indictment from a Florida grand jury. That's how dirty this Department of Justice and Jack Smith's office are. Wow. All right, Julie Kelly, uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate your insight. Good to have you on. Thanks. Have a great day.